Radioactivity is a random uh, process. That means you cannot predict which nuclei will decay or when a particular nuclei will decay. So much like if I throw a dice, I can't predict when I'll get a six. Um, so each time I throw it, um, it could be any number between one and six. But there is a probability of throwing a six, um, which is one in six. So if I throw it enough times, I will get a six. Um, and there are lots of things which we have which are random but do have a fixed probability. So, for example, here are some other um, uh, versions of this. So we have a coin. That's a 50-50 chance. We have a four-sided dice, so one in four chance. Uh, we have a six-sided dice, one in six. Ten-sided dice, so one in ten. And a hundred-sided dice, so one in a hundred. And each one of those we can't predict, it's a random process, but what we do know is that there is a probability of throwing either a heads or a four or a six or a ten or a hundred. Because radioactive decay is a random process, um, we can model its behaviour mathematically um, by looking at something that also has a random um, chance of occurring. So we're going to use these six-sided dice. Um, and what these all represent is all these dice represent radioactive nuclei. So they're all unstable. And they all want to decay by either alpha, beta or gamma radiation and become more stable. So I've got a trayful here of radioactive uh, um, dice and each one represents an unstable nuclei and if I um, throw these die in my model into this tray what I can say is that in this time period in this throw any that show black have decayed so they've all decayed and given out either alpha beta or gamma radiation and become more stable so in our model any that are black have uh, become more stable so what I'm going to do is in this particular throw, and this could represent a minute, an hour, a year, or a million years, but in that particular time period, all of these ones that are showing black are, um, have decayed and become more stable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the ones that are black from here, and I'm going to count them up. So all of these dice here have decayed. There are 22 of them. So 22 of the dice have decayed. All of these ones here still in the tray are unstable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record on my sheet here um, that in the first uh, period of time, or the first throw, I got 22 decays. So I had an activity of 22. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to put all of these dice back into the pot and I'm going to throw them again. All these ones are still unstable. These ones are stable, so I'm going to leave these out. But these ones are still unstable, so in the next period of time, there is a probability that they will decay and give off radiation and become more stable. So I've collected together all of the unstable nuclei. I've kept separate the stable ones, the ones that have already decayed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them again. That represents another period of time, which could be an hour or a year or a million years, as I say. Um, and I'm just going to uh, throw those. And once again, I'm going to remove any that are stable. So I've removed all the ones that were stable in this turn, and that was 19 this time. And I've collected together all the ones that are still unstable, and here they are in the pot. And I'm going to throw these again, and I'm just going to keep repeating this until either all the dice have gone, or I've thrown 20 times. And I'm only going to do it up to 20. I'm not going to keep going until I get rid of all of them. And I'm going to record those on this sheet. So I'll do that now. So I've carried on going all the way through and you can see all the results. They're fairly random, they go up and down um, and I have recorded zeros because that is significant. So in that 20th throw I didn't throw any um, black dice um, but it is significant. So in that time period there was no radioactive decays. Um, I'm left with two dice but I'm just going to stop at 20 because that's as far as my graph's going to go. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my results and I'm going to add them to the class total, so all of the people in the class. So I threw roughly 100 dice there, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to all the other people in the class's results, so there were 10 other groups, so we've got a roughly 1,000 dice we've thrown, and that will give us a really good understanding of what happens, because obviously in uh, nuclei, we're talking about billions upon billions of nuclei um, inside a radioactive sample, so we're talking about lots and lots of dice if we want to uh, try and model that behaviour. 
So what I've done is I've added my results here in this column here and these are all the other groups in the class and so I've added up the total for the class and they're in here in the class totals um, and you can see that in the uh, Excel spreadsheet that's attached. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plot a graph of the throw number against the total number of decays uh, that we had for each throw. And here's the graph, and you can see this on the attached spreadsheet as well. Um, but what you can see is that although it's a very random process, uh, it does give us a very good curve going downwards. So to start off with, we get a lot of decays because there were a lot of dice available, and the probability of throwing it was 1 and 6. As we get lower, further along here, throw number up to throw number 15, um, the number of decays, the number of sixes, was much, much less um, because uh, there were far less dice available. So we started off with 220 um, uh, sixes, or black dice, and we've gone right down until we've just got uh, three or four um, because there was very few dice available. And this is very similar to um, the decay of nuclei. Um, so as the nuclei decay, obviously there's less nuclei available to decay, um, so it's quite a good model. Um, and although it's a random process, much the same in radioactive decay, there is a probability of a, a nuclei decaying, and it will hopefully give us a very similar shape to what we'd get if we looked at a radioactive material. So obviously I could have repeated this experiment using um, coins, um, or four-sided dice, ten-sided dice, or a hundred-sided dice, um, and the, re the graph would be very different. So if I uh, used coins, they would decay very, very quickly because the probability of a decay would be very, very half high. If I said that a head represented um, a decay process happening, well, there's a 50-50 chance, so they would decay very quickly. Similarly, with the four-sided dice, it would decay quite quickly, certainly quicker than the six-sided we used. Ten-sided would be a bit slower, and this hundred-sided just take a long, long time. And this represents um, radioactive materials that decay very, very quickly, so some will decay in less than a second. This uh, represents um, decay processes that take a long time, so some decays take um, hundreds of millions of years uh, to, to occur. So uh, the probability will change depending on the um, material, the isotope we're looking at.